So my name is Eric Swanson. My background is uh, I have a degree from MIT in electrical engineering and optics. I spent 15 years at Lincoln Lab working in optical networking, laser communication, and biomedical imaging. And since that time, I've uh, become uh, an entrepreneur and involved in small, biz small and medium-sized businesses. And I do a lot of volunteer work and still have an office at MIT and elsewhere. Back in the late 80s and, and early 90s, there were various researchers around the world that all contributed to the development and, and progression of OCT. One of the first OCT companies was founded out of MIT in 1992. Uh, it was an ophthalmic-oriented company called Advanced Ophthalmic Devices. Uh, Professor Fujimoto, Carmen Pulafito, and myself were uh, co-founders. That was acquired by Zeiss in 94, and then Zeiss just did a tremendous job over the next decade or so bringing this technology to market. And around 1996, I think Zeiss released their first uh, commercial uh, OCT Gen 1 system. So from there, the market has grown quite healthily, and, and today there are you know, lots of uh, ophthalmic companies and lots of OCT companies in various medical fields and non-medical fields as well. It's hard to predict the market and, you know, I, I don't want to make uh, too many predictions about that. You know, today the system market is on the order of $400 million and it's grown just very, very well over the last several years. It's dominated by ophthalmology, which is roughly on the order of 300 million of that $400 million market. Cardiovascular now, there are two companies releasing cardiovascular products in OCT. They've done very well, and probably in 2013 that'll approach 100 million. But those are the existing markets, and if you look at the number of startups looking at GI and, and uh, pulmonary and uh, dermatology and other applications, the likelihood is that the market will continue to grow in a very healthy way. I think if you look back 10 years and you look at the state of the technology and you look at the state of the technology today, it's just dramatically different. There have been tremendous advances in, in hardware, looking at optics and signal processing and interferometers and probe design. Software is a very rich area of advances and, uh, and then of course the applications. And, and that big quantum leap over the last 10 years, I suspect the same chunk of development is still in the future. So there's all kinds of opportunities for innovation and continuing in hardware and software and clinical applications. So I think there isn't one area, if you, if you attend the conference here, you'll see advances in all kinds of areas. Hardware again, optics, electronics, software, and application and probe design. So I don't think there's one area that stands out far above all the else as needing development. Um, you know, the technology is quite capable today and I think you'll see dramatic advances over the next 10 years. If you look over the last decade or so, uh, worldwide, government funding has exceeded on the order of a billion dollars. So there's been a tremendous amount of government investment here in the U.S. and of course everywhere else in the world. And my opinion is the return on that government investment has just been incredible. If you look at the, the integrated market that of, of capital equipment revenue of OCT-related systems, it far exceeds that number. If you look at the reimbursement for ophthalmic OCT in 2010 alone, it was well over a billion dollars. If you look at the impact on jobs and, and, and most importantly, the healthcare, the impact on you know, treating blind diseases on a global basis or trying to address some of the cardiovascular uh, disease concerns and uh, either by developing new pharmaceuticals or tools or understanding you know, the progression of cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer in the world, as well as cancer, the government has played a huge role in paying for some of those early clinical studies and trials. The government has played a huge role in making this field happen. The return has been incredible from an economic and a human point of view, and I think the same government invested is, uh, investment in the future is still warranted because there's just so many other applications that I think will continue to pay dividends. Unequivocally, ophthalmology, I think, is the most mature application. There are you know, something like 14 ophthalmic OC companies that use OCT in one way or another. Uh, I think it's in widespread use globally around the world. I think there's something like 20 million uh, procedures on humans a year around the world. So almost once every second, an OCT procedure, ophthalmic procedure, is being performed. So it's the most mature. Cardiovascular, I think, is the next most mature application. I think they've had over... You know, St. Jude was first to market. I think they've had over 100,000 uh, cardiovascular um, imaging procedures in humans. And now Terumo has released a product as well. So cardioval uh, cardiovascular is clearly the next uh, most mature market. Predicting the future is hard. My belief is it will be GI, companies like Nine Point Medical, and I'm on the board of Nine Point. Uh, the GI application, it, it's, there's a big need for new imaging technology. There's a lot of 
of uh, papers and publications and demonstrations that have been done, and I think that's poised to be the next, next big application for the future. And what I see is, is an awful lot of telecom developed concepts in optics and lasers and fibers spilling over and powering these other fields. And OCT has benefited tremendously from the advances in the telecommunication field. And my belief that things like you know, silicon photonics is a big deal. It's revolutionizing telecom right now. And you're now seeing that migrate over into biomedical applications. So uh, I'm a big fan of, of the miniaturization of silicon and electronic components to apply to medical applications as they've done in, bio, in uh, telecom. The medical applications catch a lot of the limelight, but there's lots of researchers looking at all kinds of things uh, related for OCT imaging, anything from uh, counterfeit detection, imaging pearls, imaging jade, uh, applications in produce, looking at apples and melons, uh, security applications, uh, art applications, looking at precious art, you know, looking below the paint layers or detecting forgeries. The number of applications outside medicine is, is really quite astounding and there are a lot of interesting research groups around the world pursuing those applications.